in a world. where people are discriminated against for the mere pigmentation of their skin. Where the cries of the oppressed are forced silent and regarded as meaningless. Where prejudice constructs barriers that separate two groups of the same family. One case will change it all. Group 6 Productions presents versus the Board of Education. Flashback to a schoolroom in 1952. What do you see? A desk? A few books? You know what you wouldn't see? Any racial mixing. In the beginning of the 1950s and before, racists getting to do anything together was unheard of. For example, Water fountains. Public bathrooms. And even the entrances to buildings were designated for a specific race. This constant enforcement of separation made it impossible for the races to ever reach harmony. Until in 1954, a man named Oliver Brown got sick of his child being forced to go to school that was not at all equal or near equal because his child was black. Linda, dear, are you okay? Dad, they're going to go to school. I mean, some of the other kids in my grade don't. Well, you're not like the other kids in your grade. You've got a brilliant mind. I don't want to see it go to waste. Dad, I don't mean I don't want to go. I meant that I really can't. Our books are so old we can't use them. We only have three teachers and they can't teach us anything. They didn't get to learn what to teach. Dad, I really can't take this. I want to have a future planned out that I want to be a nurse. How am I going to be a nurse when I can't even read? How am I going to take care of the sick when I don't have a school to teach me about what causes sickness? Dad, I know they say we deserve less, but I really can't stand this. I want to learn, but it's hard enough to bid. Linda, I'm, I'm going to do something about this. Linda was correct. Black schools weren't treated as well as the whites. Many of the teachers didn't have as much knowledge. As Virginia National History Society states, black schools therefore received far less financial support than did white schools. Black schools had fewer books, worse buildings, and less well-paid teachers. In this quote, it is proved to us that the black schools did get treatment as Linda was describing. Due to this fact, Brown did have a reason to get mad. Brown kept in mind the unsatisfactory learning place his daughter was given. He let it set for a few days. He knew he couldn't do any talking to change anything. One day, he had finally had enough. Brown then let his feelings out and had made a decision to sue. I can't take this anymore, Lee Lola. I know that you're frustrated, but there's nothing you can do. You know they won't listen to anything you say. You're a black man. You have no rights in America. Sir, I would like to sue the Board of Education for this injustice. You are denying my constitutional rights, and I will not stand for it. Oh, Brown, hush up now, will you? You know as well as I do that the rule states separate, separate but equal. But that's what I'm saying. They're separate, and they're not equal. Things were looking bleak for Oliver's situation. With a steadfast judge prohibiting him from moving any further, he was stuck. Thankfully, the judge died. was not the only person who had tried fighting for unsegregated schools. There were many others. The Supreme Court finally decided to hear the cases. They took in five cases and filed them all under the title Brown v. Board of Education. The cases testifying went as need be. All five cases got their points across. It was only left up to the judges. The topic was still undecided when fate changed how the outcome would be. And you see my point. These schools may be separate, but not equal. These schools go against the Constitution. They go against American standard. Thank you for your time. We judges are going to discuss. So, eventually, they did find a new judge. An African-American judge. They're right. 
It's not fair. This isn't constitutional. By what laws? They're fun as they should be. Blacks deserve less than this. They're black for heaven's sake. What do you mean, deserve less? You, sir, are what my people call scum. It's like if you tried to make a pie, you had a whole bag of flour and a little bit. Which pie is going to be worse? Of course someone with no flour. I can't help that you're too idiotic to see that the second pie is so unprivileged. George, why can't you see that you're wrong? This case isn't about skin color anymore. We can't call this law we know as unconstitutional just and, ju and do our job. We took oath for this job. Don't you dare deny it because you think it's all white black. The vote was taken. Chief Justice Earl Warren was the leader in getting the bill to pass and a unanimous decision with the help of African American Judge Thurgood Marshall. Everyone was convinced. On May 31, 1955, it was official. The decision was made. Segregated schools were now illegal. Now cut back to that schoolroom, yet imagine it now. This case, as well as the several that followed it, show the world that sometimes not everything is black and white. In today's class, you have people working and being together no matter of skin color. This is a great thing. Due to civil rights activists such as Brown, we are now able to have what we have now, happiness and no racial discrimination in school.